Hey, this is Daniel from What Obi Plays, and today we're doing a teardown of the AYN Odin 2 Mini. This is a powerful Android-based emulation handheld from AYN, and is the smallest of the Odin 2 line of devices, modeled after the PlayStation Vita, which I have here. The Odin 2 Mini features dual analog sticks, although the Odin 2 Mini's left stick is up top, whereas both of the Vita sticks are on the bottom. The Odin 2 Mini is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, and comes in either a base configuration with 8GB of memory and 128GB of storage, or a pro configuration with 12GB of memory and 256GB of storage. It is also the only Odin 2 device with a mini LED panel, coming at a 5 inches, 1080p, 16x9 aspect ratio display. AYN also tried to mimic the Vita's controls, where the D-pad and face buttons have this crystal treatment. It's unique to the Odin 2 Mini, and they feel great to use, and it gives it a more premium look. The back also has similar grip pads, although without the back touch panel. This white Pro model is my personal device, and today we'll be using this black base model. Now to get started with the teardown, the tools we will need are a Phillips 00 screwdriver, tweezers, a spudger, a guitar pick, and this eye plastics tool, which is longer and much more flexible than a guitar pick, so we can both take out the battery and access the screen. And as with all my teardowns, I like to use this magnetic mat so I can put the screws in the same pattern as they are on the device, since not all screws are the same size and length. We want to make sure we don't accidentally put a long screw into a short hole or have a missing or extra screw at the end. Everything will be linked in the description box below with Amazon affiliate links, and every purchase helps me pay for these devices since I buy everything myself. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. Power off the device and remove the micro SD card. Use your guitar pick and slide it around the edges of the shell to undo the clips. I like to start from the trigger area since I can pull from the trigger area of the shell to get my pick started. Once you have the clips undone, you can just pull off the back shell since there's nothing attached to it and we can set it aside. We can see there is another plate underneath and we can also see the 5000 milliamp battery, cooling fan, vibration motor in the middle, and the speakers. Use your tweezers to pull out the connectors for the fan, speakers, and vibration motor. Then remove the 13 screws around the edge. Once the screws are out, use your guitar pick to pry the plate off. There is a small gap at the bottom center that we can use to insert our pick. This plate is much easier to take out than the back shell, so it should come off with just a little bit of effort with the pick. As you remove the plate, the shoulder buttons will probably fall out of the frame. Go ahead and set those aside as well. You can remove the speakers and cooling fan if you want, just take out the two screws on each, but it's not necessary. Disconnect the battery from the motherboard by popping off the ribbon cable with your spudger. If you have the iPlastics tool, open the flaps covering the battery and use the tool to slide it under the battery. Then rock the tool back and forth and work your way across the battery and it should eventually come off. If you don't have the tool, then you can either try to grab the battery with your fingers and pull it off, which will take some effort, or you can pull on one of the flaps to work the battery off the adhesive. If you use the flaps, pull it straight since the flaps have serrated cuts along the edge, and if you pull it at an angle, you'll end up ripping the flap instead of lifting the battery. I know this because I made this exact mistake in my Retroid Pocket Mini teardown video. Once the battery is out, stick the flaps down so they're out of the way. Now let's remove the right controls. Remove the captain tape on the daughter board ribbon cable and set it aside. Use your spudger to flip up the gates on the shoulder button, joystick, start and select button, and daughter board ribbon cables, and pull them out of the slots. I would leave the daughter board cable on the right alone, that will come off when we pull out the daughter board. Also be particularly careful with the shoulder button cable, this right angle cable is very fragile. I actually started working on this video last month, and the reason I had to postpone it was because I ripped the shoulder button cable when I was trying to pull it out with my spudger, and it took about a month to get new shoulder buttons from AYN. I did attempt to scrape the surface of the cable to expose the copper contacts and solder some loose wire, but it wasn't stable, so life will be easier if you just don't rip it. Pull out the joystick cap from the front and take out the two screws on the joystick module.
When removing the joystick module, make sure you don't lose the little rubber dust cover. Take out the five screws on the daughter board, one is hiding under the shoulder button cable. Lift the daughter board and we can remove it and disconnect the ribbon cable as we lift it out. If we flip the board around, we can see the membrane connections for the action buttons. Pull out the action buttons, which like the Retroid devices, come out as one combined piece with the membrane. Taking a closer look at the action buttons, we can see the details of the crystal buttons, which are very well made. The ABXY letters are textured on the top of the button, and they are super clear down to the base and really shine in the light. AYN did a really good job with these, and I can't praise these buttons enough. Take out the two screws and we can remove the start and select button board, membrane, and buttons. Switching sides is a similar process. Pull off the captain tape, lift the gates on the four ribbon cables, removing the three from their slots and leaving the daughter board cable in place. Pull off the joystick cap, take out the two screws, and pull the joystick module out. Take out the five screws on the daughter board and we can lift it out. Flipping it around, we can see the D-pad uses dome switches. The D-pad and membrane are also one piece. Take out the two screws and we can remove the home and back button board, membrane, and buttons. Gently lift the A sticker and set it aside and take out the four screws on the heatsink. Under the heatsink, we can see copper contact points that match up to the thermal pads for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor and other chips. Pull off the foam and captain tape from the middle ribbon cables and set it aside. Then flip up the gates on the ribbon cables and pull them out of their slots. Use your tweezers to pull off the Wi-Fi antenna cables at the bottom. Then take out the four screws on the motherboard. Use your spudger to gently pry the motherboard from the top. We need to work it out from underneath this clip on the frame for the micro HDMI port. Once you get it partially out, twist the spudger a bit so the bottom of the micro HDMI port can clear that clip on the frame, and then we can pull it out. We can take a thin knife to pry out the heat shields to see the chips underneath. The thermal pad on the Snapdragon processor is very fragile and started to disintegrate when I tried to peel it back, so I wouldn't mess with it unless you want to replace the pad. Replace the heat shields and go all around snapping them back into place and set the motherboard aside. For the top controls, take out the two screws on the bar. Then use your tweezers to pull out the whole top bar, which has three dome switches for the power and volume buttons and the power LED. Then we can pull out the membrane and buttons. Take out the 14 screws on the gray plate. Then run your guitar pick under the blue strips to loosen them. Peel them back and use your spudger or guitar pick to start lifting the gray plate from the top. As you start to lift the plate up, the ribbon cables will start to slide through the holes. Once you get a bit of a gap, hold it in place and then take your iPlastics tool and insert it into the gap. You want to insert it right up against the plate and work it back and forth to separate the adhesive from the top LCD ribbon cable. Once you've separated everything from the plate, push the blue tabs through the holes and continue prying up the plate. For this next part, you want to make sure you don't rip the Wi-Fi antenna pads that are stuck to both the plate and the frame. Gently pull straight up from the bottom of the plate and rock back and forth and you can partially separate the Wi-Fi antenna pads from the frame. We're not trying to fully remove them from the frame, just loosen them enough from the frame so we can use them as a makeshift hinge to reveal the screen underneath. 
Under the gray plate, we can see the LCD ribbon cables and we can see the blue tabs attached to them that will help us pull them back through when reassembling. Looking at the underside of the plate, there is some kind of copperish tape, I'm assuming for insulation or to pull off heat from the chip underneath. We can also get a look under the Wi-Fi antenna cables and see that even though the antenna cables are serrated with holes in the pads, the antenna actually runs all the way under the adhesive. Start to fold the gray plate back over the frame using the Wi-Fi antenna cables as our hinge. Push the blue tabs on the two LCD ribbon cables through the holes. As you lower the gray plate into place, pull on the blue tabs to make sure the ribbon cables go all the way through the holes and don't get pinched. Then stick the blue tabs to the plate. Replace the 14 screws, making sure not to over tighten and put excess pressure on the panel, you just want them finger snug. Put the volume and power buttons and membrane into their slots and make sure the two tabs on the ends are properly seated. Then put the top bar back in and secure it with two screws. Grab the motherboard and making sure the Wi-Fi antenna cables are out of the way, insert the motherboard into the bottom of the frame. As you lay the motherboard down, use your spudger to pull each of the ribbon cables out from underneath the board. Once you are sure the top bar ribbon cable isn't getting pinched, press down on the top of the board to fully seat it. Secure it with four screws and then reconnect all the ribbon cables and Wi-Fi antenna cables. Replace the foam tape on the top ribbon cable and the captain tape on the other two. Replace the heatsink and secure it with four screws. Then replace the little A sticker. Put the home and back buttons, membrane, and board into place and secure it with two screws. Then put the D-pad and membrane back into place. Grab the daughter board and flip up the gate on the motherboard ribbon cable connector. Make sure the shoulder button ribbon cable is out of the way, insert the daughter board ribbon cable and lower the board into place and lock the connector. Pull the home and back button cable from underneath the board and then secure it with five screws. Reconnect the ribbon cables and lock their connectors. Make sure the dust cover is on the joystick, and then insert it, secure it with two screws, reconnect the ribbon cable, and replace the joystick cap. Don't forget to replace the captain tape on the daughter board ribbon cable. Similar to the left side, reinstall the start and select buttons, membrane and board, and secure with two screws. Then reinstall the action buttons and membrane. Make sure the gate on the ribbon cable connector is up and the shoulder button cable is out of the way, and slide the cable into the daughter board and set it into place. Pull the start and select ribbon cable out from underneath the board and then secure the daughter board with five screws. Then reconnect all the ribbon cables. Replace the joystick, secure it with two screws, reconnect the ribbon cable and replace the cap. Then replace the captain tape. Open the flaps on the enclosure and put the battery into its slot. Then close the flaps and reconnect the ribbon cable to the motherboard. Put the shoulder buttons into their slots. Then put the back plate on and snap it into place. 
Replace the 13 screws and then reconnect all the cables. Finally, put the back shell on and go all around the device snapping it back together. Insert your micro SD card and power the device on. Let's go into the gamepad tester so we can make sure everything is hooked up properly. The gamepad tester is in the Odin settings section of the system settings app. Everything looks good so we can call this teardown complete. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I have a lot of videos in the queue to be made, so make sure to click the bell and turn on all notifications so you get notified when I post a new video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.